Our plan, of course, is to uh, uh, take liberties with uh, the arms in the outfield, except for Clemente, who has the greatest arm in uh, baseball. We felt that in scouting the Baltimore club that they're the only outfielder that had an average arm or above was Paul Blair. We're not going to take too many chances on San Guillen unless we feel that uh, we can get a jump on that particular pitcher. We felt that Echebarren has a good arm, but that he takes too long to get rid of the ball, and if he is rushed, his throwing accuracy is affected. We have tremendous respect for their pitchers. We think that uh, Steve Blass is uh, the finest p uh, pitcher on their ball club. And as you all know, they overshift on Powell, but we overshift a little bit more, and we figure this is going to give us an advantage if our pitchers can throw the ball where they want to. We uh, concentrated uh, rather heavily on trying to stop uh, their big men like uh, Stargell and uh, Roberto Clemente, who incidentally is almost uh, scout-proof. <laughs> seen for the third straight year and they're heavily favored to win as they did a year ago against Cincinnati's big red machine. Earl Weaver, Baltimore's bubbly bouncy manager and Danny Murtaugh, Pittsburgh's rocking chair resident genius. The amenities are observed all around welcoming the commissioner of baseball Bowie Kuhn and the Pittsburgh Galbraths John and Dan is Baltimore's Jerry Hoffberger along with the Oriole Brass Harry Dalton and Frank Cashin. The Pirates in a World Series for the first time in 11 years start Doc Ellis. And the Orioles, with a choice of four 20-game winners, pick Dave McNally. Roberto Clemente fires a first shot for the Pirates, a first-inning double, and it extends an 11-year streak for the pride of Puerto Rico, his eighth straight-hitting game in World Series competition. Now Willie Stargell, the home run king of the majors, coming off his finest year. Wildest plagues McNally in the second. After a walk to lead off batter Bob Robertson, a wild pitch, and for one inning, the best defense in baseball gets jammed like a temperamental computer. Hello, Bob, Manny. Come on, thank you. Shortstop Mark Belanger elects to play the front man, but the throw caroms off Robertson's helmet, and he scores on the air. Now a squeeze by Jackie Hernandez. McNally's throw wide of the plate. Sanguian scores, and Earl Weaver asks for time. Hey, let's go. Come on, shake him up. Get back in the game. The demon slot will make us mad. Let's go. You ready? Come on, let's go to work. Doc Ellis staked to an early gift-wrapped three-run lead, catches the Orioles on the rebound. In the bottom of the second, Frank Robinson gets one back in a hurry. All right, let's go. Same as last year. Now, let's go. Come on. An inning later, this one bounces through the middle. And this one finds the alley on the right side. Merv Rettman starting in center. It's beyond Stargell's desperate leap. The Orioles lead four to three. Rettman explains. I was just looking for a pitch to hit. I'm not a home run hitter, and uh, Doc Ellis, I think, was trying to throw the ball down and away, and was up and in a little bit, and uh, I wasn't sure it was out until I rounded first because I hit so few home runs that I run everyone out. When Boog Powell follows the homer with a walk, Ellis takes a walk himself. I started uh, having trouble with my arm in San Francisco the first game of pitching the playoffs, and I knew then that my arm was gone, but I will definitely be back next year. Coming in behind Ellis, Bob Moose. Don Buford in the fifth shows the Bucks he's a leadoff man with exceptional power. 
In so many ways, the Orioles are reminiscent of the Yankees of a generation ago. Win or lose, they hang in there and they think positive. Let's go. Let's get about 12 every game. 48 runs. McNally, after a shaky start, knocks off 19 batters in a row. And when pinch hitter Al Oliver goes down on strikes, it's a three-hitter for the classy left-hander. Baltimore five, Pittsburgh three. And only the weather, it seems, can keep the birds from their appointed rounds on Sunday. Commissioner Bowie Kuhn decides. We have decided after inspecting the field and checking with the uh, weather department that we will cancel the game today. Uh, it, second game will be played tomorrow at 1 o'clock, and we would plan to play the third game on uh, Tuesday in Pittsburgh as it is now scheduled. Game two is played on Monday, originally a travel day. And it's all right with American League President Joe Cronin and Johnny Johnson of the commissioner's office. On the National League side, Pittsburgh's Joe Brown with League President Charles Feeney and predecessor Warren Giles. The First Lady, Mrs. Richard Nixon, does the pregame honors after the first World Series rain out in nine years. And now it's Jim Palmer, accustomed to winning World Series games for the Orioles against Bob Johnson, a playoff winner over San Francisco. In the second, Brooks Robinson drives in the first run of the game. And for Brooks, it's the start of a perfect day. This guy's not as quick as he was when he was with KC. Get the kid thrown. The kid is Bruce Keeson, a rookie with a right-handed whip. In the fourth, Dave Johnson jams a two-run single to the left side. The score now, 3-0. And Bob Johnson is replaced by Keyson, the kid who seems as nervous as a bridegroom. He'd be one in six days. The walk to Belanger. Then Palmer forces in a fourth run. So Keyson gets a quick hook. Bob Moose is the third pirate pitcher, and Buford lifts one to medium left. The bases still loaded. Johnson tags, and a strong throw by Stargell beats him to the plate. The impact sends Sanguian spinning. And plate umpire Ed Sudol calls a runner out. Let's play it again. I knew it was going to be a close play because uh, Stodge has got a gun. And uh, if I didn't get a good jump and coming home, I wanted to slide. I didn't too much want to run into Sangi, and he's a little bigger than I am. But uh, I just lowered my shoulder and tried to knock the ball loose. Uh, he was a little bit hurt, but he didn't drop the ball. In the fifth, the Orioles launch a six-run inning. But not until the indomitable Clemente gets his own message across with this beautiful whirling throw. Hendricks falls with his run scoring single. And when Oliver fumbles and falls, three birds are sent into orbit. After five innings, it's a 10-0 ball game. Timeout for a once-over lightly on the bases. And taking umbrage at the role played by Linda, the beautiful broom girl, is Pittsburgh coach Frank Ochia. There's one final touch to remind fans of 1970. Brooks Robinson goes into his act. Brooks three for three on a day. The Orioles made 14 singles. And the old pro is still pure magic of field. For seven innings, the Pirates have been kept off the scoreboard. But then Richie Hebner tags a tiring Jim Palmer for this three-run homer. Palmer, struggling with his control, walks eight in his many innings. But with a fat 11-3 lead, veteran Dick Hall comes in to close it out. And pinch hitter Milt May, a youngster to remember, is the final victim. Baltimore 11, Pittsburgh 3. Game three comes to Pittsburgh's magnificent Three River Stadium. The route in Baltimore leaves some raw nerves exposed. Will the real Pirates please stand up? Is the World Series a contest? Did that writer who picked Baltimore in three 
know something? Can Steve Blast stop them? Baltimore starts Mike Cuellar, the crafty Cuban, and the Pirates strike quickly. This hard grounder by Al Oliver follows a double by leadoff man Dave Cash. And when Powell's throw is behind Cuellar, everybody's safe. Now Clemente, hitting behind the runner. Roberto's 37-year-old legs beat the relay to first, and Cash scores. Hey, you nervous a little bit? No. They got one run, we'll even give them one or two more, but you stay around. Once you end at the end of the ball game, now, double play ball and we're out of the inning now, so let's go to work. We should have been over on first base now. We should have two out. Let's see you go to work. Come on. So Cuellar gets Robertson to hit the next one to the right man. A liner to Brooks Robinson, and it's a quick inning-ending double play. So that's how it stands, 1-0 Pittsburgh, until the bottom of the sixth. Sanguian's hit is to right center, and the smiling Panamanian, who plays aggressive baseball, dives in a second with a double. Up next, the veteran Jose Pagan, platooned to third against left-handers. And it takes a good play by Buford to hold his run-scoring hit to a single. Sanguian scores. Pittsburgh two, Baltimore nothing. For six innings, it's a trouble-free one-hitter for Steve Blass. Put some on the board. What do you say? No one stick around this time too long. He's quick. Got to be ready the first four or five innings. And he fold like a suitcase and we'll jump all over him. Nothing will happen until we make it happen. So let's do something. Gotta get on the base. Come on, a boot and a pop popper. Well, home run. Let's go. In the seventh, Frank has his third shot at blast. There's one, boys. There's one. Out of boy, Frank. Oh, let's see what we can do. He's out of gas out there. Let's go. In Pittsburgh's half, Clemente pulls back from a pitch, hits it anyway, and hustles pitcher Cuellar into a hurry-up throwing error. Oh, we're back in the ball game. We're only one run down. No, we made a mistake. We let the guy get on and the ball hit back to you. We well, can't afford to have two men on base with that big guy coming up. Come on, settle down. Keep us right in the ball game, Mike. We'll win this son of a gun. Come on. Stargell, with three walks in the first two games, gets three more in the third game. And now with two on, nobody out, the wheels are turning. Coach Frank Oshiak flashing the bun sign. Not once, but twice. And Bob Robertson who never bunted all year, oblivious of all the deep thinkers. Clemente on second seems to be calling for time, but it's too late. The pitcher in his motion, and Robertson makes his own strategy. An opposite field home run for three big ones. Let's play it one more time. Looking at it from center field, Clemente clearly wants a break in the action. But the second base umpire, Jim Odom, has his own ideas. Well, Clemente turned to me, turned around and tried to call time. And under ordinary circumstances, he would have been given time. But Coelho was in his pitching position, pitching motion, and it was just too late. He couldn't give it to him. So does Bob Robertson. Maybe I looked away a little bit too soon on his sign because I was very anxious to get a base hit in that situation. And Willie Stargell was the first one to shake my hand. He said, that way to bunt the ball, Hoss. And Roberto Clemente. When he gave this sign, I was looking at the Stiger. I was trying to tell uh, Stiger to be alive for the line drive. The only thing I was concerned was about the hit and run, and uh, that's the reason I was going to call for time. That's all for Cuellar. Go ahead, Mike. Next time. Get him next time. We're going to score. I know we're going to score three, too. Gosh, going three years for time. Go right after him now, Tom. Right on after him. One, two, three. Let's go. But Steve Blast keeps firing the out pitch with body English. 
And when the last out is made, Steve has a three hitter. The Orioles win streak ends at 15. And the final score, Pittsburgh five, Baltimore one. Game four, the first night game in World Series history. And the tranquility of the riverboat belies the excitement of the occasion. The fans sound off. Tonight game, I think it's the best thing that ever happened. I had to give everybody a chance to see the game. Different spirit altogether. It's all right if they have like one a year. I don't know. I think it's something different. I think it's wonderful. Great decision by the baseball people. It's the best thing that could happen. I wish I could make it. What I think of night baseball, it's all right. Thomas Edison would have loved it because he invented the lights. Me, I have other things to do. Inside, the Allegheny Club. There's more than one way to see a ball game. On the field, Stan Musial, joined by the misses, and Pittsburgh Vice President Bing Crosby, who also has a few hits to his credit. On the firing line for the Pirates, on a history-making night, Luke Walker. Paul Blair leading off, gets the first hit, followed by two more, courtesy of Belanger and Rettman. So Walker's dug a base and loaded hole for himself. And when this pass ball skips through, Baltimore's on the board. Belanger scores, and it's 2-0 Baltimore. That's what they call him. Ooh. He starts over in his dugout, Don. You and I are going to run for the clubhouse. Get your pitch, brother! The drive is run down by Oliver at the warning track, but it's good for a 3-0 lead. That's it for Walker, and with the Orioles still hitting in the first, the kid comes in, Bruce Keyson, a big leaguer for just three months. And when Johnson bounces out, the Orioles settle for three in what Earl Weaver would call the pivotal game of the series. Baltimore's fourth starter is a fourth 20-game winner, Pat Dobson. And quickly, the Pirates get back in the ball game. Get in the hole. Thunder strikes the first Pittsburgh blow behind a walk to Dave Cash. Hop on over third, Allie. That's in there, boys. And the kangaroo bounce off the synthetic grass makes it a two-base hit. Stargell scores. The Pirates down by one, and Weaver up again. Listen to me now, you got good stuff. But you're grunting on every pitch, you hear? I'm not going over two, I can make a lot of All right, nice, I know it, nice, easy motion. A pretty good hitting ball play. Got a good fastball, put it in good spots. And then throw the breaking balls when they're not looking for it. You don't know when it is, Sarge will just guess. But nice and easy, you hear? Pop at the last minute, everything at the last minute. Now relax, you'll be all right, you get out of here, and that's all they get. In the third, more trouble for Baltimore. Hebner's on first with a single. And now, Clemente tags one. Well, what is it? The umpire, John Rice, says foul. And here comes Murtaugh. We're having a general conversation. Yeah. The ball just missed the white line, but that much sense. John! That bullpen don't think listen, you're right listen, on that side. I know, but none of them were out there except the one guy now, Dan. And he's looking this way, and I'm looking right yeah. here. Doom, it's just missed. If I call it the other way, I got an argument by the other guy. Well, what the I say, care I said, about that? I said, that's right how, I said that's how close it was. Well, that's idiotic. In other words, you don't want that to argue. Let's play it again, Sam. And this time, look at the men in the pirate bullpen, especially the one in the extreme corner. He turns away. And who turns away if it's fair? And this time, Lamenti settles for a single, a 10th straight series game in which he's hit safely. Hebner pausing at second. And now Oliver with his second run producing hit of the game, and it's all tied up. Meanwhile, the expectant bridegroom has been firing bullets. <laughs> 
and just enough scatter arm to keep the birds loose. The Langer escapes, but three don't. Three winged batsmen. No other pitcher in World Series history ever bagged that many in a single game. And if Keeson isn't rough enough on the hill, the 6-4 rookie goes for more, trying to take out Dave Johnson on a double play. And in the confusion, he tries a Baltimore cap on for size. Keeson comments on the play. I wasn't trying to hit Johnson. It was just lack of the base running skill on my part, more or less. In the bottom of the seventh, Eddie Watt comes into a 3-3 game. Robertson starts something. Now Sanguian. The pinch hitter is Vic Davalio. Hey, it's in a hole. Blair, after a long run, drops his twisting fly. Robertson makes it to third. But Sanguian, with a big turnaround second, is nailed. Two out now, and the pinch hitter is Milt May. It's a tie-breaking single for the 21-year-old rookie catcher. And somewhere, there's a proud father who used to play third base as Pinky May. Now the Bucks call on Dave Jeffsy to lock it up. And Powell's foul pop tells it all. The World Series is all tied up. And the Pirates, unlike the elephants, didn't come home to die. It's the day after the night before. And Nellie Bryles becomes the newest inspiration of Danny Murtaugh's rocking chair genius. Bryles, who hasn't pitched in two weeks, and very little then. But except for this single by Brooks Robinson in the second, and another by Boog Powell in the seventh, and walks to Hendricks in the fifth, and Buford in the ninth, Baltimore manager Earl Weaver wonders where all his big hitters went. Dave McNally, who finished strong the first time around, can't avoid trouble. And in the second, Robertson's blast is all the Pirates need. His second home run, his sixth in postseason play. Before the inning ends, Pittsburgh makes it 2 nothing. Sam Gian. Let him steal, Don. Let him hit. Let him hit. And with two out, Miles helps himself, bringing home the fastest catcher around. letting your body get way out there. You know, maybe you got to concentrate on charting your stride. So hang your body up, hold, hold it just a second, and then come down. Okay? You got no pain, have you? No. Okay, come on now. Fastball looks good if you start getting it down. So in the third, McNally keeps it down to Bob Robertson. And even if Brooks Robinson shows he's only human. Kleins, on with a walk, gets to third on the error. And this low in the Sanguian becomes a run-scoring wild pitch. Pittsburgh ahead, 3-0. The way that's good. Well, we just said that. In the fifth, Gene Kleins leads off. Clemente's turn, and he keeps the scoring and his own streak going, punching a curve under McNally's glove in the center. Four to nothing, Pittsburgh. With Bryles in complete command, even pitching on his face, the Orioles go quietly, and the complete turnaround seems to unbalance their poise. And at no time is this more in evidence than when Jose Pagan pops up. And look who goes down.
The last out, and with it, a sweep in Three Rivers Stadium. The Pirates taking the World Series lead, holding the Birds to nine hits in 27 innings, showing the kind of pitching and defense that Baltimore is endowed with, but has not unveiled so far. The series comes back to Memorial Stadium. The Orioles with two more days to prove they're what Earl Weaver proudly calls and sincerely believes the best damn team in baseball. No team in recent history has come into a series with finer credentials. 100 or more victories, three straight years. It's up to Jim Palmer, but in the second, Pittsburgh's big gunner, Bob Robertson, behind the double by Oliver, knocks in the first run of the game. Clearly, Palmer isn't the overpowering pitcher he can be. I'll tell you something, your fastball isn't as good as it was the other day. Concentrate on getting the other stuff and keep yourself in here. Come on. One run ain't gonna do it. That's just what we need to wake us up. But go after him. Come on, Jim. Clemente, who tagged Palmer for a single and double the first two times they met up with each other, improves on that. Boys, this guy ain't got it today. We're gonna get to him. And now a homer in the third. Roberto going with a pitch and sailing it over Frank Robinson's head. It's his 11th hit and first homer of the series. And the Pirates lead two to nothing. Bob Moose opens for the Pirates. He's a sixth different Pittsburgh starter in as many games. And back by plays like this, the Pirates seem about to wrap it up. But in the sixth, Buford opens with a home run on a 3-2 pitch. The first extra base hit by Baltimore in 26 innings. It's 2-1 now, and the bullpen gets busy. After an error by Richie Hebner puts Johnson on, Boog finally beats the stacked right side. Clemente comes up firing. Your attention, please. Now pitching for Pittsburgh, number 27, in this jam, Bob Johnson, ineffective as a starter, does a superb job. After Frank Robinson pops out, Rettman strikes out. And Brooks Robinson becomes the third out. The Pirates still lead after six, two to one. But in the seventh, the Orioles try running and succeed. Steals second. Dave Justy comes in to complete a walk to Buford, and Dave Johnson crosses him up. A soft liner over short for the tying hit. Oh, more on the board, more on the board, let's go. In the ninth, the Orioles go for the tiebreaker. Buford with Belanger on first and two out. And only a good play by Clemente keeps Belanger from scoring. Do it just our part of the game. Show them how we did it all year. So it's up to Dave Johnson. Jackie Hernandez recovers, and that's out number three. We're going into extra innings. Number 20, Frank. Now the Robinson. Orioles face Bob Miller, and with one away, Frank Robinson walks. Rettman up next. And he bounces one through. And look at Frank Robinson shift into high gear. Batting six, playing third base, number five, Brooks Robinson. That puts runners on first and third. The infield, the outfield drawn in. The contest now, Vic Davalio's arm against Frank Robinson's aging legs. The Orioles have tied the series up with a grim comeback in what has to be one of the most dramatic World Series games of all time. Frank Robinson fills us in on his determined heads-up base running. 
it was going in the third. I'm watching it. Richie Hebner went to the uh, inside to take the throw, so I knew I had to slide to the outside. And I knew it was going to be close, so that's why I went in head first. And uh, I believe that's the quickest way for me to get there. I'm just thinking now we're on first and third with one out and Brooks coming up. Just know Brooks is going to get you home some kind of way. The main thing when I was thinking about coming down towards the line is I have to score. I got to score. And Manny Sanguin, uh, he went up in the air, so I knew I had to go between his legs and not around it. So it was just a real tough play, but I just knew Brooks would get me in some kind of way. And so it comes down to Game 7 in the pressure-packed 68th World Series. And on the second Sunday in Baltimore, the threat of rain persists. I've only been in three series, but this has been the best umpire that I've been in. It was one hell of a job all the way. It was a great job by everybody. No questions about any rules. Now just bear with me with the rain. We might be here a long time. Okay, boy. Okay. Steve Blass, the man who turned it around, whose three-hitter stopped the Baltimore Express at 15 in a row, gets a second crack at the Orioles. And there are symptoms of wildness of trying too hard in the blast delivery. And Weaver picks this spot to challenge Blast on a technicality. 801. Rule 801 says he's got to take his he's got to pitch from in front on the rubber in front and not on his side. This is a lot of tricky stuff. This isn't about to stop, but he's got to come to a stop soon. He's he's pitching from the side of the rubber. He's got to pitch from in front of the rubber. We know that. Well I'm also about to stop. He don't stop either. So now pitching from in front of the rubber, Steve Blass. Rule 801. Mike Cuellar, back for the Orioles, matches Blass. Three scoreless innings with less trouble. But with two out in the fourth, Clemente, the unsinkable pirate. And the Pirates lead one to nothing. The Orioles, meanwhile, waste some scoring chances. Have a good day, Boog. One good day right now. This is what we've been waiting for, Booger. On this final decisive day, the heart of the Baltimore lineup goes hitless. In the eighth, Stargell gives Pittsburgh's thin lead a boost. Pagan. Take run, Don. The Landers relay to the plate is cut off by Powell. Stargill scores. It's 2 0 Pittsburgh. There are some who felt Powell should have let the ball go through, but this replay supports the wisdom of the cutoff. Out comes Earl Weaver, still thinking ahead, as all managers should. Hey, we're all right now. That don't mean nothing, you hear? Let's don't let him get this one in. We'll get I doubt if he'll bunt. He'll probably be trying to go to right field, but let's go to work. Come on. Mike, call him right there and we'll get him, okay? In the bottom of the eighth, Blast meets his toughest challenge. Hendricks opens it up. Now Belanger. And a follow-up sacrifice bunt by Tom Chopin moves the tying runs into scoring position with one out. Hendricks scores the Baltimore run. Time now for a conference. The tying run on third and Davey Johnson up. Jackie Hernandez makes the play. The last act. Three more outs. And Boone Powell is stopped by the overshift. 
Frank Robinson. Better than this, fellas. We're better than this. And now the last hope for the Orioles, Merv Rettman. Hitting to the same spot that set up Baltimore's winning run the day before. But this time it's plugged up. And the game, the series, it's all over. Pittsburgh with a World Series victory as improbable as the one that shipped the Yankees 11 years ago. And the only major link between then and now, Roberto Clemente. Again, hitting in all seven games for a devastating 414 average. And doing everything else expected of a superstar. In the field, on the bases, putting on a one-man show, total in concept and execution. A most valuable player on a battling, superb championship team.